If you thought Skunk Works was cool, then head on over to mod.coolermaster.com and watch the biggest names in case modding compete for over $20,000 in cash and prizes. Hey, what's going on guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and today we're gonna look at something that is actually quite rare in North America. I know, right? Everything seems to be like centered in North America. But we're gonna be taking a look at the Galax GTX 980 Hall of Fame. One of the first things you'll notice about the Hall of Fame card is that it is absolutely monstrous. The thing is huge. It's got seven heat pipes on this thing, ensuring that everything stays nice and cool. You can actually see six in the back here, but one loops towards the front. Uh, but what actually makes this cooler very unique as well is that very few brands are actually incorporating the VRM into the massive heat sink design. And a lot of times they'll have a smaller heat sink that the air blows over, but these, uh, this massive cooler actually touches the VRMs, which is important because when you have a custom built card like this, where everything from the ground up is built from scratch, then they can do things like that. And it works out very, very well. This thing requires two eight pin PCI Express, and it does have two 80 millimeter fans and one 90 millimeter fan on the front. Now, unlike most graphics card manufacturers where they put a little toggle switch on the top of the card here uh, for going between the different BIOS, they actually put a button on the back. And this is nice because it means you don't have to open up your case to switch the BIOS on this thing if you wanna kind of play around with it. You can simply push it on the back. Now pushing this thing in does ramp up the fan speed on this thing. It does also increase the power that goes to the GPU, theoretically giving it better overclocking. But of course, overclocking is always gonna come down to the luck of the draw when it comes to the silicon lottery inside of the die itself. Now, one of the other things that makes Galax cards extremely sought after it's the fact that they have all white PCBs. Now on the back here, as you can see, we do have a uh, bare anodized aluminum backplate or aluminum. People always get onto me for saying aluminum. That's how we say it here. Sorry. Sue America. But you have the white PCB, you have the white and gray cooler on there, it's with, along with the black fan in the middle. And then you do have the aluminum backplate on there, which just looks Absolutely fantastic. You do have three display ports, an HDMI and a DVI, which is pretty standard. And you know what? There's not a whole lot else to say about this thing other than it's got all the standard 980 specs built from the ground up. I say we put this thing on the test bench and actually let it put its money where its mouth is. Because let's face it, when it comes to the cost of this card, it does carry quite a premium here in the United States, especially considering we can't actually get them in the United States very easily at all. I bet everyone else in the rest of the world is like, finally, the United States knows exactly what we're going through. Well, not me. I've got one. Transition. Well, I think the first thing I want to point out is that with that button pushed in, the fan is going, or the fans are going absolutely balls to the wall, and there's no control over it. Uh, it's idling at 29 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, but as you can see here, the RPM is 3,200 RPM, and there is nothing that you can do to control that. I mean, whether it's on auto or manual, no matter what, you've got no control over the fan. It just goes balls to the wall. So the second you push that button and uh, turn it off, then the fans no longer ramp up. But they claim you get more power control, so let's go ahead and see if we can overclock this thing. Um, you know, because that's what they say you can do, so anyway. Okay, now I've gone ahead and done a plus 100 megahertz over whatever the boost is gonna be. Uh, we've put 90 degrees Celsius as our priority target. For GPU temp, that's fine. It's not gonna hit 90. We just don't want it to use power target as our limiter. It does allow us to go 16% on the power target over uh, where factory is. And we added 300 to our memory. Even though the GTX Maxwell series has its like power balancing function where it's supposed to add more power to the memory when it's not being used, I found that I still get very good results by overclocking the memory than letting it do it by itself because half the time it doesn't change it anyway. So anyway, let's go ahead and go into some Valley here and just do some stability testing and let's see if this overclock, uh, well, validates. That's, that's where I start my testing is Valley Benchmark because uh, it's pretty and I like it. 
All right, so I've been a little bit less than thrilled with the overclocking of this card. And of course, it comes down to the lottery. And I've also been less than thrilled with precision, honestly. Everything has just been kind of like going like crap today. <sighs> Let's go ahead and relaunch precision. So I haven't been able to get this Hall of Fame card anywhere near um, neither the 980 classified from EVGA or the 980 hybrid water cooled one from EVGA, which is a reference PCB, which is crazy. So that just kind of goes to show that no matter what, the uh, silicon lottery is going to play a factor. No matter how custom you make the board, no matter how amazing you make the VRMs, no matter how high of uh, inductors, quality inductors you use, or it being 10 phases, 8 plus 2 for the RAM, or you know, it doesn't matter. If the silicon quality isn't there to get you the amazing results, then no matter what you put on it, it's not going to do it. So I ended up turning off that stupid switch in the back too because I couldn't tolerate the noise anymore. I'm not, I'm not a fan of them forcing 100% fan speed out of you, but I guess it makes sense if they're pushing more power to the GPU. But one of the reasons why I also backed off that button and that fan speed was the extra fan speed and the extra cooling wasn't giving me any additional performance whatsoever, at least on this particular sample. So anyway, it looks like the, uh, let me load up Valley again here real quick. It looks like we're gonna be settling on right around 1500, maybe 1510 on the core. And I did a lot of my stability testing here outside of, uh, you know, the camera off because it ended up taking a lot longer. There's no way I could have actually done any of this with, uh, on camera because you guys would have gone completely insane. So, um, yeah, so 1515 is where it's pretty much going. And I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not, I don't know if it's really, it's not top of the list on 980s anyway. One other thing I want to point out too is no matter how much additional voltage control I give it here, you know, it only gives you a plus 37 millivolt on this thing because it's already got high quality uh, VRMs in there, which are doing over voltage already. So this didn't make any sort of difference whatsoever. Um, K boost, all that stuff. It didn't really seem, I mean, nothing mattered. Anyway, I'm using precision on this and K boost is more of a forcing high voltage, constant voltage. So anyway, it didn't make any sort of difference in terms of overclocking. So we're just gonna leave it here and we'll go ahead and check out some Far Cry 4 after we update Steam. There's something I want to point out. Listen to this inductor noise. So yeah, granted we were in the menu and it was, or the loading screen and it was high FPS. I just want to point out that these inductors uh, are very, very audible. Even right now at 256 frames per second in this loading screen, I can hear the inductors over there. So that's not a good thing. Of course I've got V-Sync off, but of course we want V-Sync and G-Sync off if we want to test max FPS and see what the card's capable of pushing. So there's one other thing that I noticed here while looking around in a few games with this card specifically that does not happen on any other card that I own is 1440 will not show up as an option. It jumps directly from 1920 by 1080 to 3840 by 2160. So it goes from 1080 to 4K. There's no 1440p option. So I don't know what's up with that. But this, this card is getting a little bit funkier and funkier the more I... Yeah, see, even on auto aspect ratio, 1920 straight up to 3840. It just quadruples all of a sudden. It won't, it won't give me 1440 options, so I don't know what's up with that. I don't want to test this card at 1080p, but I don't want to test it at 4K either, because I know this one card is not capable of 480 uh, or 4K at a, at a decent frame rate, so... I, I guess we'll go forward with 1080. As you guys can see, I'm, I'm kind of blocked on this one here. Whatever. Okay, one thing I just want to point out right now is the inductors are going... I mean, the inductors are very, very noisy. Even at 95 FPS right now, in the game, the inductors are going very, very haywire. I mean, the FPS is definitely not disappointing, but then again, we are in 1080p, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. 
I don't know why it won't give me 1440p option though. All the other 1080s that I have, every other graphics card I have will give me the option of, you know, any resolution at any aspect ratio up to a certain point. Anyway, we'll get into a gunfight here. We'll see how the FPS does. Whoa, hello. Oh god, I'm out of, I'm out of bullets. I am dead. Yeah, I mean, the FPS is good, but it's 1080p, so it should be good. All right, so I decided for the last test, instead of doing Battlefield or whatever, we'll go ahead and do some Watch Dogs. We haven't done Watch Dogs in a while. I'm not very far into the game, but I do have all the settings completely maxed out right now, uh, including the MSAA. We're at 1920 by 1080 again. The next resolution it gives me up is 2048 by 1536. That's kind of a weird resolution. I don't know why it's doing that. As you can see, it's a little bit squished. So I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, so I guess we're going to go to 1920 by 1080. Uh, MSAA is at 4X, and we do have VSync off and GPU max buffered frames 5. We bumped it up to 5, so it's trying to render out ahead as much as possible. But as you can see, I mean, we're getting FPS in the 80s here. It's very smooth. Um, there's going to be some tearing, though. This is a 60 hertz panel. So actually, I think this is the way we were going, right? But I do want to point out, once again, the inductor noise is pretty loud. Oh, the sad part is having lost all of my progress in this game. I do love the way this guy can just kind of like pick up anything and like MacGyver it into, you know, whatever you want. It's kind of funny. I mean, I can just be like, oh. Let's craft a hacking device out of an item I just picked up off the counter. It's okay because I'm MacGyver. We'll throw a distraction over there. And we'll lure him over there. And... There he goes. That cop's like, huh? What? What happened? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There must be, there must be a noise over there. Uh, that cop is dumb. Let's find a guy we can hack. There we go. He now has $220 in the bank. He had a lot more than that beforehand. I love that this guy makes $3 million a year. And she makes 54000 a year working with him or whatever. That's funny. Labor and employment attorney only makes 62000 That's kind of crazy. So yeah, I mean, FPS, you can see sitting right about 60. But inductor noise, again, making all kinds of noise. So yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and jump into the conclusion here. Well, there you go, guys. The Galax GTX 980 Hall of Fame. I'm still torn on whether or not I want to keep doing these live benchmarks. I feel like you guys get a little bit less information overall, but you guys get a little bit more raw info on how it's performing as it's happening. So again, I'm going to poll you guys. Down in the description, there's going to be a straw poll. You guys use that link to tell me, do more live benchmarks or just start giving you guys more uh, graphs and things with maybe some live benchmarks. I don't know. Just answer the question down there. And you guys tell me what you want to see. I kind of overall feel like you get less info, but I don't know. Maybe you guys like seeing the way things are going. Like for instance, the inductor noise, you guys could hear that it was, it was pretty bad, uh, which is funny because Galax advertises that they use high quality inductors so that you don't get that noise. But clearly uh, I was getting the noise at standard FPS. Now, when you start getting massive FP FPS, like 3000 FPS in the loading screen, you're gonna get some inductor noise no matter what. But I do find that at anywhere between 60 to 90 FPS getting inductor noise that's audible over the fans, that's not good. And I also didn't do a lot of tests on this card because it started to become pretty apparent to me right off the bat that I wasn't entirely impressed with this card. I mean, it looks pretty, it's one of the coolest cards on the market. In fact, the max temperatures on this thing, I forgot to even 
bring that up for you guys. Uh, looks like we maxed out at 77 degrees. That was probably during Far Cry. Uh, it was pretty warm when I got my hand near it during Far Cry. Um, not as warm during Watch Dogs, but I'm a little disappointed by the inductor noise. I would say I'm disappointed by the overclocking and the fact that we only reached 1500 megahertz, but that's still a good overclock. Overclocking is not guaranteed on these cards. This card does boost up on its own up into the mid 1400s. Again, silicon lottery. There's no control over the manufacturer on that. I mean, unless they're gonna be doing a lot of binning, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. So the card is pretty. It's gonna have its aesthetics that it fits in in many builds, like white builds. And especially if you're doing like the new Asus Tough series, uh, limited edition motherboards, it's gonna look really nice in those types of builds. This may have just been a, a sample thing. I mean, these are retail samples. They're not, you know, tested before they're sent to us. Otherwise they would be completely biased reviews and we would never trust the manufacturers because we would always assume they're sending us their best. I want retail samples when I do my reviews and that's what I got here, so. Uh, you never know, you guys may be, see other Hall of Fame reviews too where they're getting higher overclocks and better scores, but that's, you know, luck of the draw once again. So I think the Galax GTX 980 Hall of Fame definitely has its demographic that it's gonna to appeal to. It's got all the standard features that you would expect with Maxwell, um, you know, Voxel and uh, the efficiency that comes with Maxwell. But personally, um, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in the overall quality of the, the inductors and the noise that those were making. I could, I could live with the FPS and stuff, but the fact that I could hear the inductors over the fans was kind of a real disappointment. So you guys tell me, are you using a Hall of Fame card? Uh, 980 or even a 780 older Hall of Fame? How's it performing for you guys? What do you look for in graphics cards? What do you think of the white? I do wish there were more white options, uh, but right now the Hall of Fame from Galax definitely has the white PCB thing like nailed down. That's definitely theirs. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, I have enjoyed making it for you. This is like definitely a, a pretty much a dream job where I get to play with all this cool hardware and tell you guys how I feel about it. And I do like to hear from you guys on how you feel about it. So check out all the social media stuff if you guys are interested in connecting. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.